Hey guys, since HQ doesn't watch my content anyway, I felt like I would make this video. So f feel free to share it with him. This is the cause of all the drama, all the tension, and I'm gonna explain it in the most honest and grave details possible. So, GameFinder is an app that raised $30,144 from subscribers. And it was the first time that we saw the YouTubers in that Facebook, which is Tolarian, Weds, myself, HQ, and other YouTubers. Wow, there is a lot of money out there that you can get from your subscribers if you pitch them correctly. If you get them worked up and excited and hyped, you can get a lot of money from these people. Prior to GameFinder, there was the monthly magic box, which did not pay Tolarian to review their product. So imagine all the public, all the hype and all the encouragement and all the people who signed up for the monthly magic box, which later turned out to be a scam. I assumed incorrectly that Tolarian was getting paid per box. He was not. He corrected me on Facebook saying that that was not the case. Or someone corrected me. Maybe it was Tolarian. Maybe it was Weds. Maybe it was H. Uh, I don't know. Someone said, hey, we're not getting paid for this box. And that's when I was said, what? But GameFinder was the first time that a large sum of money had been raised by from a Magic YouTuber from his subscribers. There were people who donated $1,000 or more to GameFinder. What is interesting about the crowdsourcing of, and this is my biggest criticism of PicoTrade as well, if you crowdsource it, and I know, yes, it's not exactly 30,000 because you have play mats and stickers and whatever else that you have, but that's all branding anyway. So I bought a GameFinder play mat. It was delivered to me. I no longer have that GameFinder play mat because why would I... Why would I play with a playmat of something that I don't use? I made two videos. So at that time, Monthly Magic Box was happening. HQ pretty much demanded everyone in that Facebook group to make a review on GameFinder. He also said, oh, he, when we did not, or when other people did not, including his best friend in the MTG community, his biggest supporter, he got really angry and he sent a very angry, angry post. And he attacked everyone, including me, who had made two videos and purchased a playmat. Like, <laughs> it's ridiculous, right? But this is what we're dealing with. $30,000 was raised for this app. That is someone's salary. That is probably an average entry worker's salary. And that got people thinking. At that time, Tolarian had a full-time job. Wedge was trying to figure out what he wanted to do. Immediately afterwards, they began selling playmats. And that's where the tension comes from. The tension comes from this belief that we should have helped make videos on GameFinder. Not everyone liked GameFinder and not everyone thought GameFinder would work. Wedge was one of the people who openly or unopenly expressed doubts that this is a good app. He still posts about this app today saying that, you know, it's actually kind of, he, Wedge uses it as, what about GameFinder? Huh? What about that $30,000? The app was delivered. It's just not being used very much. And that is the first time that all the YouTubers figured out, wait a second, there's a lot of money you can get from subscribers. And from that point on, that's all it's all been about. Now, a lot of you ask, mm, am I critical of Tolarian? Am I critical of Wedge being full-time? Am I critical of Christine? No, I do not. I think they are. their business model is sound. It makes sense to me. And why wouldn't you, if you could do something you love full time and get paid for it, 
it, why would you not do it? So this is the stem of every single problem. You can look at the date of GameFinder. Then you can look at the date of everyone's Kickstarters, everyone's playmat sales. GameFinder was around the same time as the Magic Monthly, the Monthly Magic Box, because the Facebook group then became, hey, why aren't you making videos about GameFinder? Make me a video about GameFinder. Hey, make me a video about GameFinder. I am almost certain that I've seen a Tolarian video on GameFinder like reviewing it and promoting it. So that's the truth. That is the honest truth of what this has been about. It's been about the 30,000 plus dollars Game Finder was able to raise, which signaled to every other YouTube content creator, wow, wow, that's a lot of money. Tolarian quit his job. Uh, I guess it was a part-time job. I'm not sure. I'm not going to make up the details. He quit. He left teaching to be a full-time YouTuber. And I feel like this is one of the first signals that everyone looked at. So I can't be the only one to say, wow, $30,000 is a lot of money to get. I make apps and we don't crowdfund apps because my the issue of crowdfunding the app is... The people pay for the app, the app gets developed and promoted. So the people are actually paying to receive promotional items and their money will be used to promote the app even more. But the end result is there's only one 100% equity owner. The people who put in money, the person who put $1,000 in did not get equity in the company. So if this company became Snapchat and had an IPO for a couple of billion, the people who originally put money in it would only get their play mats. And that's why I think it's not the best model because they're literally just giving money away in hopes to get a playmat. Uh, I like models that are more rewarding of early. That's the same with Pico Trade. And I don't know which came first or second, but Pico Trade had a GoFundMe or Kickstarter around the same time, and it looked very close to this one. But of course, Pico Trade wasn't a YouTuber. And that is the stem of all the argument. That is the stem and source of all the drama. And I wanted to be honest with you because, you know, people don't watch this video anyway, apparently. So, bye guys.